Okay, for more on what's happening in the Myanmar um, economic and political reforms, creating investment opportunities. I'm now joined by Anthony Nelson. He is the director of Myanmar Affairs at the U.S. ASEAN Business Council, which is basically Southeast Asia. We were just talking earlier. This is not the first U.S. business doing business in that region. Correct. It's the first big investment, right? That's right. This is a... Uh... This is a, an important uh, a moment for Myanmar. Even uh, over the course of the past 12 months of economic reform, Myanmar still hasn't attracted an enormous amount of, of foreign direct investment. It's still on a par with, uh, with neighboring Laos, uh, 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 really towards the bottom of the ASEAN nations as far as what it's been able to bring in. And this is the first really substantial US inv new U.S. investment in quite some time. Why is this? Such a big deal, I, I guess. I know the answer, but I want to hear from you. Why is this such a big, groundbreaking situation for not just U.S. businesses, but really businesses around the world who are looking at this area? This is tremendously helpful to uh, Thane Sane's government, because what this does is, uh, is it gives some tangible results uh, to, for, for the economic reform that they've put in place over the past 12 months. It gives the government something to point to if they get pushed back from anti-reform elements to say, no, these things are working. It's we a reward. We are getting foreign investment. It's a reward in, in some case, right? Well, it's, it's, I, I think Coca-Cola is doing it because it makes good business sense. I don't think, uh, I don't think their purpose is to offer uh, a, a reward, but, but, it, uh, but it does have the effect of, of starting the process of job creation, beginning to show the people of Myanmar that, uh, that there are really positive benefits to following this track that Thane Sane has laid it, out. If I'm a multinational firm or even a medium or small business looking at opportunities, what would you tell them? Well, I, I would tell them that Myanmar is a, is a country where you need to have a long-term plan. Uh, it's 60 million people, it's rich in natural resources, but there's a, a real lack of infrastructure uh, uh, kind of across the board, um, uh, all the way from simple physical infrastructure to move your goods around to digital infrastructure to, to stay in contact with your businesses elsewhere. Um, and, and, that, and that's something that you're going you're gonna to really need to keep in mind as, as you... As you, as, as you look at investments, that the country is still developing. The legal infrastructure is still developing. Regulations are still in process. And companies need to come in now and meet people and begin the process. But for a lot of businesses, the, uh, the real investments are going to come much later down the line. Do, do, when, they, you know, when you go into a country, do they need to have sort of joint ventures or local partners, or they come in and kind of lay the groundwork first and then get partners later, what do you normally recommend? A lot of companies are working with, with, with local partners, and obviously that provides its whole set of, 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 of benefits simply to have somebody who already knows the lay of the land. Um, but companies do have to, be, have to be very careful about really doing their thorough due diligence in Myanmar because, of course, the uh, U.S. Treasury Department does still maintain the specially designated nationals list. Th that area of Southeast Asia, there's been so much potential that's been talked about over the last couple of decades. Some of it has come to fruition. Some of it has not. What makes this unique? What makes the situation in Myanmar unique is that this is an incredible opening up of a country that's been isolated for a long, long time. Um, it's a chance for U.S. companies to, to really start from scratch in a business infrastructure that's, that's being created and to really display their competitive advantage, which is the way that they do business and the way that they give back to the communities they operate in, commit to doing CSR. You'll see along with this Coca-Cola investment, they're putting in $3 million with Pact Worldwide. They're doing a lot to make sure that they're, they're having a positive impact in the communities they're operating in. So those are the opportunities. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is what do they need to watch out for? What do they need to be careful of? Well, as, uh, as, as you know, Myanmar still is... Uh, is is in a bit of flux in its uh, in its situation with dealing with some of the long running ethnic insurgencies. We've seen some 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 clashes in in different areas, and that's something that every company is going to have to keep an eye on. Um, we've got a a, a new uh, presidential election coming up in 2015, um, and that's that's going to test out the country's institutions. Um, so investments like this. At the very least, what they can do is, is help, help strengthen the, uh, the, 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 the current administration support you, you mentioned infrastructure earlier. I, I'm just thinking out loud here, but companies like UPS and FedEx and a lot of these companies that focus on infrastructure, I mean, might there be some tremendous opportunities for them? 
I think there's opportunities across the board, but the logistics sector uh, absolutely is one where, where, where Myanmar could really use that kind of support as it tries to develop further its, even its own internal country business uh, networks. Anthony Nelson from the U.S. ASEAN Business Council, thank you very much for helping us on this very important topic.